Hello guys, welcome back to this YouTube video. This is Dr. Anjit. So in this residency explore a series about pathology, I'm going to talk everything required for a future pathologist. What is exactly pathology? What are you going to do in pathology as a resident? What are the three years going to be? Is it going to be hectic, easy or mediocre? What are the future aspects? Like can, can you do a DL? Can you do a fellowship? I'll talk about that. And the most important thing, how much you can earn and what are the avenues for growth as a pathologist in now and in the near future? And anything regarding the residence of pathology. So if you're ready for the game, just put on a smile as usual. And if you've chosen pathology in your knee, PG or INA, CT or your doing your MD pathology, this video is completely for you. To start with, my career of pathologist touched almost every aspect. I started as a uh, junior consultant. I did a little bit of, tried a little bit of entrepreneurship, tried to open my own lab. As of now, I'm heading the uh, molecular diagnostic division of Kilango Genetics Chennai, and I'm the chief molecular pathologist there. And obviously teaching is obviously a passion for us, fine. So let's go on to the video uh, straight away and talk, hit the right goal spot here that what exactly a resident in pathology does. Because pathology residency is something which is a bit of a Bermuda Triangle for most of the MBBS students, right? So they don't know where it exists. They don't know what exactly to do. But when you come inside, you might feel that you're sucked into it. Pathology, if I have to divide, it's a very broad speciality. I can divide it to four pillars or verticals. There's hematology, where you deal with bone marrow and blood. There is histopathology, where you deal with biopsies of all the tissues. Maybe a tiny biopsy, like a true cut biopsy of the breast, or an excision, mastectomy. Everything goes to histopathology. And then I have cytology, which deals with FNACs, pap smears, pleural fluid, acetic fluid, everything. And then I have vertical of genetics and clinical pathology. Genetics, you do a PCR, real time PCR, carrier typing, everything, if your hospital has that. And clinical pathology is where the urine examination, simple protein stuff of semen examination, everything being taught. Pathology is a very, very vast field, especially when you start pathology in the first three, four months. It might be really, really overwhelming. You might feel that, is my decision really wrong? I'll tell you the reason why will you feel that. Because when you take medicine or surgery or gynecology or pediatrics, you already know a little bit of history taking, examination. You must have seen patients during internship. So it's not such a steep learning curve. But on the other hand, when you take pathology, what do you know about pathology in UG? Yes, Robins. Yes, the MCQs for sure. Have you ever seen slides? No. The only place we saw slide was MBBS practical. That too, we looked outside the microscope and not inside the microscope, right? So that's the only concern here. The learning curve is going to be very, very steep. When I say the learning curve is going to be very steep, it might be really overwhelming the first two, three months of your uh, pathology residency. But fine, please hold on. Everything comes back to normal. So how to ease this learning curve? In the first posting of HEMAT, Histopath, cytopathology, I want you to cover normal. It's very, very easy to do that. If you know how normal looks, abnormality is a piece of cake. Histopathology especially, you have something called grossing and microscopy. What do you mean by grossing is, you, let's say there's a surgery for mastectomy done, modified radical mastectomy done, and the specimen comes to you. You'll have to cut the tumor, measure the size of the tumor, see how the tumor looks, how the normal parenchyma looks, take tiny, tiny bits of the tumor so that you can see them in the microscope. You can look at the lymph nodes for staging. All this is your job, right? So gross pathology might be a little bit labor intensive. Histopathology is a little bit intensive to the head. So if you know normal, it's a very gradual process. First two, three months, please make sure everything normal is sorted with. You need to know normal histology of every organ from head to foot. If you know that, pathology is very simple. Same like what we read in your uh, NEAT PG or MBBS. It's inflammation, infection, immunology, neoplasia, genetics, that's all. You cover the basics, rest everything automatically follows on me. Pathology is a subject which is very, very intensive in reading. If you love to read, if you're a book form, pathology is definitely a field of choice. Because the amount of updates which comes in pathology, no other field of medicine has that. Every year, one organ system gets updated. Every four years, every organ system, WHO is updated. That's how it is. And it's very, very interesting to always be on the front, to always be the first to receive the updates. You won't have FOMO here. You will give FOMO to everyone else here. So that's what exactly, a little bit overview of what you guys do as a pathology residence. Is the residency hectic or is the residency easy and free. As opposed to the preconceived notion that pathologists go to the work at 8 a.m. in the morning or 9 a.m. in the morning, come out at 4, 5 p.m. Yes, might be true for a consultant, not for a resident. I did my MD pathology from Jibma. I would say it's easily uh, almost on an average time till 10, 11 p.m. in the night. It's kind of routine in the first year. Second year, 8, 9 p.m. So it's definitely hectic thing. But one advantage is 9 to 4 you work, you can take an hour of break and then come back. It's not that you're always stuck here. Like I said, it's more of an intensive learning process. So it takes time. And here for learning, it's not the patient, it's the slide. So I have to stay in the lab to learn. 
so the evening part it's more of fun you be with your colleagues you be with your junior senior you learn you see slides and you grow right so yes it's a bit of a hectic job more of a mental hecticness than of a physical labor as opposed to other physically uh, difficult jobs like surgeon or orthopedician you need not roam around but you love to read a lot in that way yes i would say it's hectic third thing specialization is there any dm is there any fellowships there are lots of fellowships almost every organ has a fellowship you take cns yes actually there's a dm neuropathology as well nephrology has git has lung ctvs has either hematology has genetics has karyotyping cytogenetics has molecular genetics has right almost every fellowship is available and i want you to think about fellowship when you come to the third year of md pathology not at the first this first be a general pathologist complete everything and then find your niche during the three years of residency yes there are dm options as well there's dm histopathology there's dm neuropathology there's dm hematopathology right there's dm oncopathology so yes in near future like in the western countries our pathology is also getting diversified and definitely you'll find your own niche maybe when you come to third year of md pathology you might have more avenues as well maybe a few more dms as well dm clinical hematology is something which has always been asked like can a pathologist do that every year when the prospectors come out say for need assess i want you to look into it as on this year yes you can but sometimes there is change subtle change every year please look out for that yes there's a possibility that after doing md pathology you can do a dm hematology right so these are the dms with super specialty options available the most interesting and the important part how much you can earn see when i say earning i would personally relate that earning is equal to the amount of effort and time you put in the first 3 years of md residency don't look at the earning look at making your skills better because if i'm a surgeon and let's assume that i give a pathology biopsy to you i'm 100% sure that you will give a right report for me for a clinician patient is very very important right so whatever the pay is for a best pathologist they won't shy to pay so th- that's why i said in the first 3 years of md residency own your skills is completely completely skill based so an entry level of an average pathologist in most of the metropolitan and second tier city is somewhere around 90000 to 1 lakh 10000 this entry level does not change for any field maybe 10 15000 here and there but most of the fields are more or less in the same pace only after that how do i grow the avenues of earning in pathology you can become a faculty in a teaching college medical college hospital you can go into a private lab you can start your own lab and talk about entrepreneurship soon or you can head a lab in one of the largest chains like uh, you have uh, lalpat you have uh, srlal multiple of them right you can head one of the divisions maybe in a main uh, city or in a second tier city so like i said all of the entry point is going to give the same thing so if you are just being a pathologist and like say i am going to just see the patient say a microscope i am going to report your career will grow slowly and steadily you might plateau at the range of 2.5 to 3 lakhs per month into 10 15 years of experience it will plateau it will not grow beyond that i'll be very very honest about it but is it very hectic job for 2.53 lakhs i would say no when you go to that level of senior consultant you just couldn't diagnose that's all 10 o'clock till 3 4 o'clock that's it but again then also you have to read consistently keep updating that is important so how do i earn more than that if you want to earn more than 2 or 3 lakhs per month as a pathologist you have to get into administration when i say administration it can be your own venture of entrepreneurship of owning a lab or you become a administrative head chief of any lab like you become chief of uh, any big diagnostic chain lab you will have more work like quality control managing the people in addition to reporting so when you become chief or when you enter into administration yes you can definitely earn more than what a pathologist can earn but ultimately it's an extra skill set if you're ready for it please go ahead third part is entrepreneurship is it easy to open a lab it's bit of uh, capital intensive i would say yes if you have a little bit of background please go ahead or if you have a vision of entrepreneurship there's definitely a possibility you can go ahead is it easy definitely not is it competitive extremely competitive but is it possible to make a mark it is possible it's entrepreneurship is totally a different ball game compared to a mbbs or an md uh, doctorship right it's different so if you're set for that if you feel that yes i can do this go ahead and venture don't go all in you might burn your finger so learn become a chief of a lab in some big chain hospitals or a labs learn that then venture into entrepreneurship i would say that is definitely rewarding but it has its own challenges it will have its own problems 
but the outcome of the fruit will definitely be bigger right so that's about my take on entrepreneurship like i said i had open my lap i burned my finger so we might definitely talk about this sometimes in future if you can private message me dm me in instagram or telegram i'll definitely be able to share my thoughts on it right next so what does future hold how does future look like in future there are two concerns for a pathology one is ai one is digital pathology ai and digital pathology as for me is not a concern it's amazing it makes your life much easier with digital pathology coming inside i do report few cancer cases which happens in other parts of india sometimes even outside the world so it's just a scan slide why do i want a microscope when i can get it in my laptop it increases your avenue again like i said it's a skill set if you are good in diagnosing you can diagnose any case even from usa uk finland norway greenland sitting at your home that's the advancement of digital pathology will ai replace pathology not in near future it has lots of uh, way to go but ai is very very interesting if you want to be in the top 1% i would say involve ai learn about ai and become the leaders of ai in pathology because to develop a pathology ai i do need a pathologist right obviously i do need a pathologist you will be a valuable asset for any company which develops ai because of your knowledge and also your interest in technology and artificial intelligence right so that's about pathology and genetic scope of pathology is very very good there are lots of genetic labs coming up you can kind of go into a niche vertical and find your space as well right so i, I think i've covered most of the things required for a pathologist resident and if there's any more queries of any budding pathologist or you want to join to pathology like i said you can put in the comment section or you can dm me i'll be more than happy to share my existing knowledge whatever little i have right thank you for your time see you soon in the next video till then bye bye from dr ajay bye bye